Welcome to Night Shadows. I'm Stuart Best. Where the paranormal is normal. Where that which you thought you knew, you didn't. And where the future can be known, if you know exactly where to look. Well, good evening, everyone. Thanks for tuning in and listening, and thank you, Larry, for coming on board and uh, helping us out here with the news. Why don't we start with this Mothman, evidently kind of a winged creature with red eyes. That sounds very much like Mothman sightings. You remember the movie uh, Mothman, I think it was, a Mothman Prophecies? Oh, yes. Where that... Yeah, where the bridge collapsed. So I wonder, what's your take on this Mothman sightings? I mean, more and more people are seeing it, and evidently people are photographing it, although none of them have surfaced, but maybe they're holding out for maximum dollars or something. But what's your take on this? I'm wondering if something isn't going to happen to Chicago. It, and this creature seems to be very similar. Well, it does. It seems to, yeah, it seems to be uh, the same description of the original Mothman uh, scenario, and and I, I watched that movie, and that movie was made from a uh, actual book and uh, yes. an event. It did occur. It was true, and uh, that's what's interesting because, as in that uh, original movie, the Mothman kept showing himself, and then. Uh, catastrophic event occurred, you know, on the bridge, et cetera. But uh, I'm wondering, too, because there's been too many sightings in Illinois and especially right in Chicago itself over and over and over of this uh, flying uh, creature. And, uh, you know, there are, I don't remember them right now what they exactly say, but I know over the years you and I both have seen or read or heard of prophecies or words about some catastrophic event that hits uh, Chicago. And, and of course, uh, you know, at the moment, it's a sanctuary city, and, and uh, as many are saying, um, it's simply full of sin. Yeah. And the Lord will put up with it for a while, but then he decides, I think I've probably had enough of this. <laughs> I don't know why the world thinks it can challenge its creator, but it seems to do that. But it could well be. Now, it wasn't too long. The sightings in, uh, where was that, Pennsylvania, where that took place? I can't remember the location. But he was seen by a number of people. And did he attempt to communicate with people or not? I don't, re I don't recall that part of it. Do you? I seem to remember, if I if I remember it correctly, it's been a while, that uh, this creature was seen by a number of witnesses and attempted to communicate, but they were too scared and most of them <laughs> fled. Were, and were and, uh, that, and that's the reason this reporter went to the town, you know, the reporter being uh, the star in the movie, of course, and yes. uh, began to interview the people that had met this, this creature. And uh, then he had an experience, I believe, and... And, of course, he was there, you know, on the bridge or at the bridge, I think, when this occurred. But, uh, yeah, you got that right. That, and it's very, very telling that we seem to be seeing that happening over again. Well, yeah, it, it's kind of spooky in, in a way. But we're seeing more and more now. We never did really talk too much about this deal with Augusto where he, this dog or wolf man type of thing, uh, was down around his house, as I understood it. Yeah, across the road. It was a coyote, an upright walking coyote uh, is what he said. It just crossed the road from his house. His wife saw it, and uh, it walked around looking at him. And, and, of course, you know, I posted uh, one where small town by me, Tallahena, Oklahoma. Uh, they've mm -hmm. seen the very same scenario, and we're seeing this stuff cropping up all across the country the walking coyote or the uh, entity, you know, that looks like a coyote or a wolf upright walking. And we're seeing more and more of this, Stuart. Uh, and, and I think it, it's kind of telling to the what time we're in spiritually. Yeah. 
actually, the 923 date that's upcoming is not very far off. And not to know exactly what's going to happen, but uh, it just seems like atmosphere has changed a little bit uh, since the uh, eclipse. That things are a little bit different. Am I off base there? It seems like there's an acceleration into fall. Uh, oddities and creature movements, you know, are standard cats, dogs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, I was told that a uh, dove was sitting on a branch during the eclipse in front of the house. And when the eclipse became total, the dove fell off the branch like it had died and went down and hit the ground. But as soon as the eclipse was over, revived and took off. What do you? What would you make of that other than <laughs> some sort of... Wow. Um, what do we call that? I don't know what to even even make of something like that, other than the fact oh, yeah. that... Yeah, you ahead. call that different. That's just different is what that is from normal. And uh, listen, I got uh, emails from people that live in southern Oklahoma, down by Texas and along the border region, and, and I also watched that eclipse. I didn't watch, go outside and watch it, but I saw it get dark, yes. uh, much darker. And uh, it was odd. There was a strange feeling when this happened. And, you know, I'd also talked about in my blog or my postings about how the Native Americans, you know, they took it as a spiritual sign. And a lot of them were going into their houses and pull the shades and sit through it inside quietly. And after this, after the sun seemed to come back out suddenly and it was over, it felt odd. I, there was an odd feeling. And I had emails from people, different people, you know, that emailed me, and they said, boy, it feels strange after this happened. Said, I felt strange all over and said, all the animals are acting really, really odd. And so it's not just you, Stuart. There's something different. And, and that's what uh, it's interesting now that we're on that. We are past the uh, the American eclipse, if you want to call it that, or the, the 921. Yeah. Uh, 821 eclipse, and we're headed for the 923 event, and it's very interesting. I, I think we need to be very uh, aware of our surroundings as we go further into this time frame that we're talking about. Well, this dove thing, and you know, a dove is normally associated with the Holy Spirit or with the Lord, and it was almost like when this dove crashed, fell off the branch, like it was dead almost, uh, would that be an, e an eclipse coming of the Holy Spirit as we enter into the final dark days of the tribulation period, the time of Jacob's trouble, Daniel's 70th week, whatever you want to call it? It was almost like there was an eclipse in this dove. But as soon as uh, the thing was over, it flew away. So I was beginning to wonder if that was a sign that uh, the church is actually going to be leaving soon. Because doves, aren't they almost always? Uh, what would a, Do you know anything about a Native American analysis of of a dove, I know what their analysis of owls is, which is always a kind of foreboding and evil I or think death. That, yeah, yeah. I think that, uh, of course, in the, you know, biblically, a dove is representative of the Holy Spirit, uh, pretty much. And uh, oddly enough, if I remember some of the Native American uh, associations with doves, I believe they're messengers. So, so you would be, you know, it's interesting that you could say the dove was uh, possibly a spiritual messenger, uh, if you want to put it that way, and maybe the event showed you something is going to happen. And what's odd is, is this occurred to the dove during a time when darkness got heavy, so to speak. Mm -hmm. It was a chance, the, the lesser light, in other words, lesser, because of an event, we had lesser light and it got darker, 
around us, the surroundings. So if you you could put a spiritual connotation in that, we're we are going into what I call an Isaiah sixty darkness. Yes, I think so. And so that might have been what that was all about, a sign or a symbol of some sort that the Holy Spirit's going to be eclipsed and will be taken out of the way so that uh, make way for uh, whoever is going to uh, ascend in this game of thrones <laughs> that we're kind of watching, which kind of leads into what in the world is going on now. They keep shifting gears on how they're going to get rid of Trump. First is the Russian deal. That didn't work. Then they tried something else. I can't remember what it was. And now they're on to this, uh, he's mentally unfit. He, <laughs> and you got a liar like James Clapper coming out and saying, well, he's just not fit for office. I'm frightened by him. And then Hillary, you know, I guess all but got sick <laughs> because she hated his speech so much, his rally speech. What do you make of all this? Is this are they really going to go for him on this basis of he's not mentally f- capable? He's he's uh, just unfit for office. Do you think they really have the courage to try and do that? It's very interesting, Stuart. Um, you know, it's, uh, they they have this push started now in the streets. Uh, it, it's, yes. it's really, and, and I posted today a very interesting if, a report from truenews.com. Listen to this headline. FBI informant reports Obama's connection to the USA radical revolution. The communist playbook in the USA is being run by Barack Hussein Obama. Well, that I wouldn't doubt at all. And I don't know why our pundits, now some of them, like Newt Gingrich, came right out and said, yeah, you're you're watching a, a communist coup here. But why did it take them so long to uh, address what it really was? It's almost like they want this to happen. Well, Stuart, when you look at it, you know, I, I recently... You know, I know I get hammered a lot because people don't like me referring to Game of Thrones. And, well, that's too bad. (laughs) Uh, However, uh, there's something, you know, this show started, Game of Thrones started, and and I began to watch a little bit of the data and connect some dots in there. It started out with All Men Must Die, which is an odd title for any kind of movie, All Men Must Die. Well, uh, who is the, if that's true, and all these men are fighting each other like you do in Washington, D.C., who's the enemy? Because everybody's fighting each other, you know, trying to win the Game of Thrones. So one house is tearing down the other house, and they're all fighting over the Iron Throne. And so who's the enemy? Well, what's interesting is, get the name. Now, what's the odds during the time frame we're going into of darkness, uh, you know, uh, the name of the the entity that is coming against humanity is called the Night King. Can you get that? The Night King. Of all names yeah. they gave him. And he's a spiritual entity, but he's it's a humanoid. And, and what he has, he has White Walkers, which I, I take that to being, uh, you know, other spiritual entities. They all, they yes. all appear to be like fallen angels or something. Uh, is what they appear to be in the in the movie. Now that's my summation, but their entire army is made up of the dead. And I, I look at the movies. You know, you saw World War Z. You know, uh, the oh yeah, zombies. the zombies. Uh, yes. Here, yeah. Well, look at look at America today. The left. They're like zombies. You can't sit down and talk to them because they they don't even have a, a recordable language to talk back to you. When they're asked for the last year, what what do they want? They don't even have an answer. They're like zombies. So, interestingly, Game of Thrones, the Night King and the White Walkers, they're leading a zombie army of the dead to come and conquer and kill the living. Now, I know that sounds bizarre, but earlier you said it, something sounded a little macabre and a little, you know, we are entering an area of, of kind of, I've fallen off the edge of the earth and I can't get up. I mean, we're getting there. But what's odd, if you, if you, there's dragons involved in this. Now, the, the oddity is, and I won't be long here, 
But the oddity is one of the heroes of the living is a guy by the name of John uh, Snow. And, and I've made a mention of his name a few times. He's a bastard. In other words, his daddy wasn't married to his mother, and that's the way it is in kingdoms. And, mm-hmm. But the odd thing is he's just like Donald Trump. Every time the enemy comes against him, no matter how outnumbered he is and how stupid it is to fight him, he draws his sword and goes into battle against them. It's unbelievable, and that's what Trump keeps doing over and over and over against all the advice the world has given him. So I find it odd, uh, but that show seems to be clicking in. And what's odd? The Night King was on uh, the other night, you know, leading his armies, and he brought down one of uh, Daenerys' dragons. And the Night mm-hmm. King, if you look at his face, his expressions look like Obama. And I'm not making that up. Well, yeah, a lot of folks think that Obama's coming back. I'm one of them. I think he will come back. But when you look at Trump, uh, he's known really as the tip of the spear. And from One World Trade Center, there's an arch. And on that arch is said that the end, I'm, I'm paraphrasing it, the end justifies the means. It's a straight line from that arch to uh, One World Trade Center. And then on the other side, going the other way, it hits the Empire State Building. And then the last one is Trump Tower. Now, in front of Trump Tower are a series of trees formed in a triangle pointing downward tip of the spear. Uh, It's all very, very interesting because in that triangle of trees, there are six trees on each side of that point, that triangle. And above the triangle is the Trump Tower going up, which has uh, six uh, phallus symbols, you know, like the the thing in front of the Washington Monument, the one at the uh, Vatican, et cetera, et cetera. There are many of them all over the place. Yeah. But what was also very, very interesting is when you remember the allocades that he got over in Saudi Arabia? Oh, my. Sure yeah. you do. Yeah. Uh, they treated him with more respect than uh, anybody, as I understand it, that's ever been around. Is yeah, that not he right? Was able, he, he, he was able to accomplish what no one has ever done when he flew from from uh, Saudi Arabia directly to Israel, which is forbidden. He was given permission, and that, that ought to have been a, uh, a dot. A clue? To connect. A clue. <laughs> wow. Uh, you got a Bible code you wanted to bring up. Uh, let's get into that one a little bit, because it kind of does deal with, you know, we are watching two two people, really, I think people ought to really keep an eye on, and a possible third, but we don't really know about that, uh, Obama and Trump. Because Obama is, in fact, the one leading. He has to be the one leading all this. Now, he's coming back out this month or in September, right? As I understand, yeah, he's, he's going to resurface. Yeah, he's already begun and resurfacing and uh Leading the uh, the movement in the the elect so-called coming election. Mm-hmm. What about this? Uh, it, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I was just I was just going to say this Bible code you you asked about. It's very interesting. Barry Rothman has it under construction at the moment, but I've got uh, nine of the uh, terms that are in the matrix, and the title of it is God God joins the conversation makes clear who gave Iran nukes. And uh, then he makes a comment, Barry Rothman does, August 23rd, God's answer to those who forgot who gave the nuke to Iran, him, Korea, and their fellow enemy of America, the man who financed their nuclear program, Barack Obama. Now here's the, uh, the nine, and I'll read them and then get your opinion. Number one, nuke for Iran. Number two, B, Obama, number three, for the military, four, for an enemy, five, Kim, 
six, Korea, seven, shekels of gold, number eight, don't seek their peace, number nine, nor their prosperity. Oh, well, that sounds kind of like North Korea is going to be in the middle of an attack, maybe a surprise attack. Would you read it that way? Well, it, it Boy, could very well be. It, what, it, what it appears to, to mean, and, I, and Barry hadn't finished it yet, and his comments are not completely full, but it appears that uh, Barack Obama was very involved in providing – for the the joint at the hip nuclear programs of North Korea and Iran during his eight years as president and gave them prosperity in the nuclear weapons systems. And, uh, you know, it appears right now the ones that want to attack mostly is North Korea and Iran, and they are gearing up their militaries for an attack. Yeah, now, as I understand it, Kim's still mouthing off pretty, pretty well. Oh, absolutely, and, and, and he's also moving some missiles, and Iran is also moving missiles. And this is very interesting. You know, we've got Netanyahu, which, because Washington is not listening, has now flown with his Mossad director to Moscow and is meeting with Putin. And we find that, uh, that Iran is also now building a separate troop landing terminal in Tartus. That's the Russian military base, Syria. Yes. So... That that's that's how you bring armies to fight. Why? It sounds like very much like it's all been planned. I hate to use that term because people don't. You know, when when these things happen, they look like well, they just happened. You know, just circumstance and rhetoric or trade war or energy war or whatever it is. But it's kind of like to me. A written agenda, and they're just playing by the agenda. And the agenda now incorporates North Korea. I know a lot of people said that they thought that World War III would start in a most unlikely place. Place might be, just might be North Korea. I've often thought North Korea is a trap for the United States. The comment in uh, reference to America Babylon, surely... Uh, the least of them shall draw them out. So we're being drawn out by Kimmy and, the Whiz Kid. And, and I think it's a trap. So yeah, and what's so interesting, Stuart, is the fact that uh, Kim keeps goading Trump every day over and over and over. And uh, what's interesting, too, is the scenario, you know, you talked about North Korea may be the first domino uh, but also what I what I think about also is because of North Korea and Iran being joined at the hip in this uh, scenario, uh, mm-hmm. if we come after North Korea, that's when probably you'll have your Daniel 8 and Iran will go out to war. Yes. Yeah, that would be very likely. Wow. Uh, they don't have a lot of time left. Of course, a lot can happen in 30 days. Or maybe it goes after September 23rd, and it begins after that point, a pivot point away. There was a guy on, and he's pretty sharp. And I don't remember his name. I, I'm not sure if it's Scott Clark or who it is. But he found evidence that Isaiah 17 would take place on and around uh, 923. Huh. And I'm not sure how he dated it or why he thought that, but uh, who knows? I mean, we're all speculating here anyway, but, uh, (laughs) (laughs) you know, uh, speculation is a lot of fun, I think. Uh, So why do you think Trump is backing away from Israel? Well, the information that seems to be coming out, especially since Steve Bannon has left the White House and went back to Breitbart and has been publishing there, uh, he claims that he he was advising, uh, and that, that he was the advisor at the White House for Donald Trump, by the way, Steve Bannon. Uh, he says that he was advising Donald Trump to go ahead and move the embassy to Jerusalem and to go ahead and begin to... to uh, 
activate uh, the situation, you know, in Jerusalem and Israel and the Middle East. And uh, he is saying that Jared Kushner stopped that and Trump listened to Jared. And, of course, Jared has always been the front man for the peace initiative, which they're trying to do, but they're having a lot of problems. Netanyahu's not interested. Abbas is not interested. El Sisi is not interested. Nobody's interested in a peace deal with Jared Kushner right now. So what I'm wondering, though, Stuart, and you mentioned it, and I'd like your opinion on this, were we a little, maybe, should it have already been done, or are we maybe just a little on the timeline early, and it'll be 923 before the pivot begins? I I don't know. We're in an interesting time. Well, yeah, that pivot, the star sign, is really not for the church in, in, in one sense. Uh, That goes back to Joseph and the dreams, and there's no question that star sign is for Israel. The pre-tribulation or at-trib rapture concept, of course, means that if the tribulation starts, Daniel's 70th week, we go out. The church is gone. Now, there are people who believe in partial raptures, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, Uh, I suppose you can argue that either way, but you have Revelation chapter 2 and 3 that deal with all seven churches, and then all of a sudden, all those churches are evidently gone because church age is over. And I guess you can argue with the wheat and the tares that the Lord talks about, the separation of the Christians almost immediately. Um, But I don't know. It it just seems like if Kushner and the deep state are operating and his military guys, which are all deep state, he's surrounded himself now with military, that should cause a little concern for people. Uh, You know, it makes you wonder, is the deep state trying to delay this because of star signs, because of... uh, numbers or whatever reason because you know when trump was coming up he was all pro-israel we're going to do this for israel we're going to do that for israel now all of a sudden that's all back on the back burner yeah it is on the it is on the back burner uh Stuart. and what's interesting is now that putin again is re-engaged with netanyahu uh, we've got to watch closely and see what he does because it appears and i was watching uh a number of uh, reports out of Israel the last couple of days. Israeli press and the media are very concerned because they say their opinion is that Trump started right, but something happened, and Israel was very low on America's priority list. And so now Israel is in danger and about to go to war, and Netanyahu has pivoted to Russia, to Putin. So will Putin take the place, you know, if Trump doesn't move, will Putin take Trump's place and initiate something in the Middle East himself? Well, there would sort of be a, uh, how do we say that, a shrewd chess move if he did. So I guess we have to tell everybody, just wait and watch. Mm -hmm. Uh, We only got a minute left. Uh, There's a Jewish rabbis now now that are calling for all the Jews to return to Israel. That is a major sign, folks, and it dovetails immediately into the 923 pivot point. 2017, 2018, uh, a lot is going to happen, I I believe. Uh, Any final word there, Larry, before we leave? Oh, yeah, I'm I'm getting the same reports that the Jewish rabbis are calling for and even they're even calling for the American Jews to return to Israel, that it's going to really get bad. And so that is a sign. It's a big, 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 big sign, folks. Uh, this is all supposed to happen. Anyway, uh, thanks, everybody, for for tuning in. Thanks again, Larry, for coming on board. We'll see everybody uh, Friday night, the good Lord willing, and we hope he is. Anyway, good night, folks. <laughs>